In this lesson, let's try to talk about uh, how to sketch or graph logarithmic functions. So in the earlier lesson, we say that whenever you're given an exponential function, for example, where y is equal to 2 to the power x. So the basic things uh, that we had mentioned is to say that um, basically the shape of uh, such an exponential function is going to be like this. That's what we say. OK. So at the point one there. So what is very important to note is that as you get to talk about a logarithmic function, for example, if you say let y is equal to log 2x, so it's basically going to be an inverse of that. So a logarithm is basically an inverse of an exponential function. OK. So what we had mentioned under the exponential part, we said the x-axis is basically the, the horizontal asymptote. OK. That's what we mentioned for the exponentials. So then, as we get to talk about logarithms, we are going to have what we call what? the vertical asymptote. So it basically gets to come out like this. OK. So it can't cut the y-axis. And that's why we are saying it has got what we call a vertical asymptote. OK. So now, there are some of a few things that you have to understand for you to be able to sketch a logarithm. OK. So basically, when you have um, y is equal to the log of x, how do you get to sketch it? So what you're going to be considering is the, the sign of the log and also the sign of the x. So you ask yourself a question to say, OK, so since in that case, what we have is in a positive log and a, neg and a positive x. So in which quadrant are the positive? Where do, you, where do you are the y positive and also the x positive? It's basically in the first quadrant. So this logarithm is going to basically come out like this. OK. So how about if you get to change the sign? So if, so if you change the sign of the log, for example, it becomes a negative log. So where is the y negative and where is the x positive? So in that quadrant, that's where you are the x being positive and your y is basically negative. What quadrant is that? Okay, so you can agree with me that in the first quadrant, the x-axis is positive, the y-axis is positive, negative, and negative. So where do we have the y negative and the x positive? It's basically in the fourth quadrant. So that's where it's going to approach. Okay, so how is that going to come out basically? So it's something that is supposed to have been this way. OK. So what we want to maintain is that we want to maintain the fact that the y-axis is going to be our vertical asymptote. OK. So what happens if we change the sign again of um, the x variable there? Let's try to change the sign is what we're going to have. Let's say it becomes negative as well. OK. So where do we have both negatives? So it's basically in this quadrant. OK, so what we want is we want the y-axis to be the asymptote. OK, so that's how it's going to come out. Then as you might guess, if the y is positive and the x is negative, it's going to be in the second quadrant. OK. So in such a case, how does it get to come out? So it's going to be something like this. OK. So these are the important shapes that you have to understand. By just looking at the signs of the logs, you should be able to tell the shape. OK. So I've got a few examples with me that are going to help you more in detail to go about it. So now let's say you have um, y is equal to log 4, x minus 2, plus 2. How basically can you sketch that graph? OK. So a few things that we know about logs is the fact that log of x and x, this is basically equal to what? So whenever you have got the same base there, you have to know that it's equivalent to a 1. OK, so we're going to take advantage of that. So we want to make sure to get to the point where the base is equivalent to what? To the number there. OK, that is one of the things to take part, to take note of. Okay. So that's one. 
The other thing that we have to know is that whenever you have y is equal to the log of x, basically we understand that when you have the log of 0, it's basically what? It's basically undefined. Okay? So if you punch that on your calculator, it's basically undefined. So that is basically what helps us to, it gets to give us what? The vertical simple. So whenever you have the value of x here being equivalent to a 0, then that will be your vertical asymptote. So we've talked about the vertical asymptote. We've also talked about the, the point where this is equivalent to what you have in brackets there. Okay. What else is very important? What else is going to help us? So the other thing that can help us is a fact when what you have in the brackets uh, is basically equivalent to a 1. Because what we understand is that whenever you have any log with the 1 there, it's basically going to be, I can write this in another form to say to the power 0, which is basically going to give us a 0. Yeah. So in case you don't understand what that is, check out our video on the basic logarithms. So we know the three things that are very important that can assist us when sketching. So let's come up with a table values. So we have x and y. The first thing that we've said is we need to make sure that the base is the same, right? Because when we have the same base, we are saying this is equal to a 1. So let's try to get what's in the brackets here. What we have is x minus 2. So when x minus 2, we want it to be equal to 4. We equate it to 4. So this is going to be true when x is basically 2 plus 4, which is a 6. So when our value of x is equal to 6, our y is going to be 4. So we've come up with a first point there. The other point that we are mentioning is we want to make sure that what's in the brackets is equal to 1 because whatever base you're going to have, provided it's 1 there, it's basically going to be a 0 because we make that to be a 4, the power 0. Okay, so in this case, what we have in the brackets? What we have in the brackets is x minus 2. So equate x minus 2 equal to being a 1. So you're going to find that x is good, basically going to be a 3. Okay, so that when you put 3 minus 2, what you're going to have is what? Is a 1. So you have a 4, the power what? The power, the power 0 when x is equal to 3. So at that point, what value are we going to get? So this part is going to be equal to a 0 plus a 2, which is going to be a 2 there. What else do we have to put into consideration? So we have to put into consideration what we're calling the, the vertical asymptote, the point where we don't expect it to cut the y, the certain y axis. So we are saying that gets to happen when basically your value of um, Let's say your value of x there is equal to 0. It is undefined. So let's write it out. So we want x minus 2 to be equal to 0. This can happen when x is equal to what? When x is basically equal to a 2. Okay. So our vertical asymptote is when x is equal to 2. That is our vertical asymptote. So, we so with this information, we are able to sketch our logarithm there. Let's try to sketch it. Okay. So what do we have? So we have, uh, at least we have uh, x. So the smallest value that we have so far is when x is equal to 3. So when x is equal to 3, your y is equal to what? Your y is equal to 2. Then uh, we also know that when x is equal to 2, that is our vertical asymptote. So we can show it there. Uh, we don't want it to cut that line. Then the other thing that we know is that uh, when x is equal to 6, our y is equal to 4. Somewhere there. 4, somewhere there. So we now understand the shape. So it's basically going to be something like this. You shouldn't cut y is equal to 2. Okay. So what is the shape of our logarithm there? So basically the point that we're trying to make is that in this case, our vertical asymptote is 2, and we understand by looking at the sign of the y-axis, we're able to see that it's supposed to be that way. That's the shape. Okay, let's try to look at another example gets to understand more how to go about it. Now, let's say in this example, 
let's say our y is basically equal to log 3 x plus 1 so we are just a few things that we've talked about we've said that we need to make sure that what's in the brackets is basically equivalent to the base okay because we understand that whenever you have the same base with a value there that is equal to a 1 so we want to use that property to help us so let's try to equate what's in the brackets to be equal to a 3 because that's the base that we have in this case so what is going to be true when basically our value of x is equal to what? is equal to 2 okay so we can come up with that so we're saying when x is equal to 2 our y is going to be what? our y is going to be basically equal to a 1 so in this case we don't have anything being added so it will just be a 1 itself so that is going to give us a 1 then another property that we're trying to take advantage of is um, we don't want this to be equal to 0 because when it's equal to 0 it means that it's undefined so x plus 1 when is, equal to, when is it equal to 0 so it gets to be equal to 0 when x is equal to negative 1 so that is our vertical asymptote so x is equal to negative 1 is our vertical asymptote then another value that is very important to come up with is when what's in the brackets is equal to a 1 because whenever it is equal to 1 what we expect is that when you have any base with a 1 there what it means is you can express that to the base raised to the power 0 and if you take it the other side what you're going to have is a 0 as your solution okay so in this case the only value of x that can give us um, a 1 is 0 because when you have um, x plus 1 this is only going to be equal to a 1 when our x is equal to a 0 so when our x is equal to 0 what are we going to have? so when our x is equal to 0 what we are going to have is log 3, 1 ok so at that point it's going to be log 3 the power 0 which is just going to be a 0 okay so it's basically 0 comma 0 that's what we have in this case so we have our vertical asymptotes we also have the cardinal 3 2 coordinates to help us sketch it out okay let's sketch it now so where is our vertical asymptote so our vertical asymptote is basically x is equal to negative 1 at this point so we have our vertical asymptotes. Then we also have a point we expect it to cut that x is equal to 0, comma 0, that point. Uh. Then the other point that we have is 2, comma 1. So 2, comma 1, somewhere there. Okay. So basically we are able to see the shape. Okay. So that's, that's what we have there. And in such a case, when they ask you to sketch such a graph, and they ask you for the domain, so for the domain, what they're asking for is the values of x that can define a function. And we know that negative 1 is going to make it to be undefined. And we can't pass going this side. So we are only limited going to the right hand side. So in this case, what we can say is for our domain, for our values of x, the minimum we have is negative 1. But negative 1 is not included, and thus we have to use a curved bracket. So it's all the way from negative 1 up to positive infinity because it's not ending this side. That is for our domain. Okay. Then for our range, our range gets to define the values of y. So for the values of y, we are going down there. It's unlimited. We are also going up there. So it's basically from negative infinity to positive infinity as our range in such a case okay let's look at one more example a very unique form where you start with something then you subtract the log okay how is this one different how do you get to sketch it okay so taking note of our properties what you're saying is uh, let's come up with our values of uh, x and y we want first of all to think of um, a point where the bases are equal right with what is in the brackets so in this case we have a base of 2 so 3 minus x, when is it going to be equal to 2? So it's basically going to be equal to 2 <coughs> when you have 3 minus 2 is equal to x. So when x is equal to 1. 
So the moment x is equal to 1, what are you going to have? So when you plug in x to be equal to 1, what you're going to have is 2 minus log 2. So in the brackets where if you put a 1 there, it's going to be a 2. So you have log 2, 2. So you have 2. So whenever you have got the same base and the value there, it's basically a 1. So you have 2 minus 1, which is going to give us a 1 there. Another property that we are taking note of is when what's in the brackets is equal to a 1. So when do we expect to be 3 minus 6 to be equal to 1? So basically what we are going to have is 3 minus 1 is equal to x. So when x is equal to 2. So when x is equal to 2, what we expect is that in the brackets what we're going to have is a 1. So we're going to have our y being equal to 2 minus log 2, then a 1 there. Because if you put in a 2 there, to be a 1. So the 2, the 1 there is the same as the base 2, raised to the power 0. Okay, so this part is going to be equal to 0 from the logs. Okay, so our logs still teaches us to say that that can come this way. So we have 2 minus 0, then log 2, 2. So log, whenever you have the same things there, it's a 1. So you just have basically have a 2. So, two properties have been used. One, where the brackets are equal to one, and also when they are equal to the base, in this case, which is a two. So, we've come up with coordinates there. Then another thing which helps us to determine the vertical asymptotes is we are saying, when do we expect what is in the brackets to be equal to a zero? So, three minus six can, is only, can only be equal to zero when our x is equal to what? Three. So, that is our vertical asymptotes there. Okay, so with this information, we should be able to sketch it out. Okay. Let's try to come up with a graph. We see how it's going to come out. How do we expect it to come out? So that's what we have. Okay, so our value of uh, first coordinate there is 1, 1, somewhere there. Then our other value is 2, 2, somewhere there. Okay. So for our vertical symptom, what do we have? We have y is equal to what? Our x is equal to 3, sorry. Somewhere there. Let me use a different color so that it looks better. So what is our vert vertical symptom? Sir? So how is the graph going to come out? So. So it's going to come out like that. So eventually it's going to cut the x-axis and going to get down there. But it's going to take some time. But this is how the shape comes out for that log. Okay. So in this case, if I ask you to find the domain, the domain, you look at the values of x. And we know that we can't go beyond x is equal to 3. So basically it's um, 3 as your maximum, where it's not even part of the values of x. But then it's supposed to be can go as far as the negative infinity. This is for our domain. For the values of y, there is no limit. So it's basically from the negative infinity to positive infinity. As we can see, it's increasing as well as decreasing this other side. So that's it for this video. I just hope that you now you are now able to sketch logarithmic functions. So that's it for this video. I just hope that now you're able to sketch logarithmic functions with ease.